Well, thank you very much, Senator Mamura, for joining us on the program. Uh, let me start by asking you, are you surprised at what is happening in the Senate today? When you were there in the Senate, did this kind of thing ever happen, where the president had to return a bill to the Senate and then propose his own amendments? Uh, not that I can remember now. I can't. I can't really remember um, um, a particular, uh, you know, incident like that. You know, I can't. I can't remember. But, but in your opinion, is it out of place for the pre for, uh, is it out of place for the president to have done what he did? Um, I think yes and no. Yes, because. Um, I don't know whether to say, unfortunately, when you look at the Senate rules, you know, the standing orders of the Senate uh, to 2011 as amended, Section 88 there gives that window for Mr. President to do what, what he has done. And that's exactly what the Senate President was yes, trying to say on the floor. That, but... Yeah, when he was saying that, uh, well, we, we seem to have boxed ourselves into, so, into, into a corner. So it, 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 it's, the Senate, it's the Senate rule that will appear to have given that window to Mr. President, which he then, you know, exploited. But uh, that's on the yes, you know, side. But no, because constitutionally, what the Constitution says is that uh, once the bill has been forwarded to, to, to him, uh, he, he should just signify his intention to sign or not to sign. That's all. That's what it is. It's, 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 it's a closed ended uh, uh, option, if you like, for him to just indicate or signify that he's signing or he's not signing. Not to now come up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, amendments. You know, you know it's, it's, it, that's, uh, that's legislative function and not an executive function. L let us look at some of the issues the president raised, for instance. He, he said something about the bill. He talked about Section 67 of the Constitution, yeah. and he says this bill is basically a duplication of Section 67 of the Constitution. W uh, what's your take on that? I disagree. It is not a duplication, you know, uh, per se. Yes, uh, the, the because Section 67 actually mm -hmm. talks about the president coming to address yes, the joint uh, sitting of the national right, assembly right of attendance. on any national issue. Right of attendance. That's that's Section 67 of the Nigerian Constitution. Yes, right of attendance. But if you look at that section, Section 67, subsection 1, that is what that is the one that concerns the president. If you, if you read it carefully, what is you know it, 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 that power of right of attendance? Conferred on Mr. President to address a joint session on any issue of national importance is discretionary. That is, if he so considers, and, and you know, that is the discretionary thing. But what what the Senate has tried to do is to now compel. Because and that is where the, pro the president has a problem, too. Yes. Now, now, now the, 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 the issue is this. The issue is this. It will appear to me that in the wisdom of the Senate, the Senate is saying that it will appear that, you know, Mr. President has not diligently or sufficiently exercised that discretion. In the past. In the past, of course. Then let me remind you, you recall that at a point in time, because there had been so many issues which the National Assembly as a whole, not just the Senate, had expected Mr. President to address the joint session on. Issues of security, particularly the Boko Haram, the social upheavals, uh, even uh, economic issues, which the President failed to do. And you recall that at a point, the House of Representatives even summoned, quote unquote, you know, summoned Mr. President to appear, I mean, to, to, uh, to address it on the security concerns raised by members. So when you look at all this, I'm feeling, that, I mean, I have a feeling very strongly that it is the totality of this that's now um, pushed, as it were, the Senate 
to coming up with a, with a, 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 a bill which, when it becomes a law, will now compel, as we well, should now make it mandatory as opposed to being discretionary. Uh, there, there's something else the president said in his uh, reply to, to the Senate that I want you to, you know, react to. He said, for instance, that it shouldn't be mandatory for him personally to come present this address, that it should, that the clause should, should be rewritten in such a way that uh, he could delegate that assignment to his deputy, that's the vice president, or simply just send the text, transmit the text now to the Speaker of the House of Representatives and the Senate President. I absolutely disagree with the president with all due respect on that issue. Because, look, even the Constitution, which the, that section 67, subsection 1, which Mr. President feels that, uh, you know, um, the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 it, it, it's a, a duplication, quote unquote, of the, I mean, or the, 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 the bill, State of Ordination Address uh, Bill, that is a duplication of that section, yeah. 67, does not give the Vice President that power. The pre to, the, the, to address. The, to address. The power is given to Mr. President and Mr. President only. So Mr. President cannot be saying now that he, he now wants to delegate that power. No. It gives that power strictly to Mr. President, right of attendance. It, 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 does, not, it does not say that uh, uh, Mr. President could delegate or in his eyes. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's discretionary. And I'm not aware in, in any other uh, democracy where this thing holds, like in America, in South Africa, and other. I am not aware of any situation, any circumstance where the Vice President now goes ahead. So it's in conformity with what you can call uh, international uh, democratic best practices. Uh, uh, some, some other thing, the, the president also raised the issue of, um, you know, this completely being against the spirit of uh, separation of powers, that, um, you know, that the, 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 the Senate, the National Assembly, as, uh, as it were, should not be so empowered to, to uh, summon the president to address the nation on the subject because the president argued that what the bill has basically done is to give the the national assembly the power not just to summon him but to also decide what he will talk on the, the subject what um, the, the the topic of the national issue should be and at what time in part the, the the particular time with which uh, he must come to address because that's also the issue of timing it's also part of it the president wants it to take place uh, within 30 days of uh, the first uh, legislative year and um, the, the, the Senate, uh, the National Assembly, I should say, is insisting on, uh, on uh, say, every 30 days of the first sitting of uh, the, the, the National Assembly. Look, you see, irrespective of uh, the reservations of Mr. President, I'm happy that Mr. President himself, too, has come off with the, with the, with the, with the doctrine or the principle of separation of powers. Good. Now, the first thing to say is that separation of powers that we talk about is not and cannot be absolute in a democracy. In fact, rather what happens for the good of the people is uh, interdependence as opposed to absolute, which cannot even be separation of powers. Having said that, again, What Mr. President ought to have done, as far as I'm concerned, is to sign that bill. Because the, the lawmaking function is primarily that of the legislature and not that of executive. That is not to say that you don't have instances where even other arms of the uh, government, apart from the legislature, can make laws. Yes, we have. I mean, because a judicial pronouncement, particularly at the apex court, is a law. So the judiciary can be a lawmaking uh, body. You know, under that circumstance, you know, again, you have what we call delegated function, delegated le delegated legislation to the executive yeah, and all that. Yeah. Right. Now, but the point really that, that, that I am making is that if you look at Section Four of the Constitution, which talks of um, you know legislative power, it says it says that, you know uh, the legislative power you know conferred on the, on the on the National Assembly, you know, shall be for for peace, order, and good government. That's what it says. 
So if in the opinion of the legislature, and in this circumstance, if in the opinion of the National Assembly, they feel that this particular legislation is for the cause of peace, order, and good government, but let it, let it be. Let it be. And of course, again, back to the issue of separation of powers. It now behoves on Mr. President, mm. if he feels a particular legislation is in conflict with the provision of the Constitution, he is not the one to, you cannot be a judge in your own country. He, he, he should refer it to the judiciary, through the court. And, that's not a, and, and that won't be the first time. I can remind you, the Electoral Act of 2003, which Mr. President, then Ambassador refused to sign, and was returned, invariably the, the National Assembly passed it. But unfortunately, they passed it by two-thirds majority of members present as sitting, as opposed to two-thirds of the entire National the Assembly. National Assembly yeah. And of course, the, 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 the Supreme Court quash the thing. Do, do you see this going to court? That is, look, look, now, that, that, that is what... That's, and and uh, I should also ask you that, um, how, how do you see this playing out in, in, in the Senate? Do, do you think the Senate will go ahead to override the President's veto, so to speak, on this? Well, that is now left for the Senate, you know, the National Assembly as a whole. You see, let, let, that is where I'm going. What are the options available? The first option is for the president, as far as I'm concerned. Unfortunately, I think we have gone beyond that now because he has said, I mean, he has returned the thing unsigned. But I would have expected, I mean, what I would have said is for Mr. President to sign it. Sign it to law in spite of, of his reservations. And then now we can forward a bill for, with his proposed amendments. Okay. Okay? That's the first. The second is for him to sign it into law and then go to the Supreme Court to challenge that law. Even after signing? Oh, into, of course, because you, you, there will be, you can't put something on, on, on nothing. You, you will now be challenging a, uh, a law that is in existence. You can't be challenging a, a, you know, a law that is not <laughs> that's not in existence. That, that okay. is quite true. Then the third thing now is where he has failed to explore these first two options. Of course, it's now the ball is now in the court of the National Assembly. If the National Assembly still feels, you know, um, you know, if, 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 if they are still adamant on going ahead, it's just it's just for the National Assembly to to get its members and. They, Pass the thing by two thirds majority. Where it really sort of the feelings of Mr. President, it becomes a law. Mr. President can still go to court if he so desires. But I don't see Mr. President really, you know, winning, quote unquote, on this issue. Because for as long as the National Assembly is its other man, it will get its members to. Over override and, Mr. And President's should, should veto. Should this even generate any, uh, any controversy at all? This is just a bill asking the president to come and address the nation. This, this, is, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. That, look, the, the National Assembly has a duty conferred on it by, national, uh, by the Constitution to make laws for peace, order, and good government. And this is one of such. In, in the opinion and in the wisdom of the National Assembly, which is one of such legislation that, you know, it has put in place, which Mr. President now is feeling that, no, I don't want to sign this. Ordinarily, you know, because that's why I said the, the, the framers of the Constitution saw the need for this and put it under Section 67, right of attendance. We and Mr. President will now come to our best issues of national importance. But Mr. President has not taken it's advantage. advantage this is, of that's right that's why I said it's, it's, it's either out of uh, frustration and out of a feeling of alienation of the, of the people that the members of the National Assembly represent. You know, either, you know, any of these reasons or a combination of these factors must, you know, would have compelled, as it were, the National Assembly to now come out with a legislation that will now make it mandatory, mandatory. as opposed to discretionary. Because the, the, the National Assembly in its wisdom, you know, felt that uh, 
that discretion given, because if, you, if you're given a discretion, it is, it, it is expected that you will exercise that discretion diligently, sufficiently, responsibly. But if, on the other hand, that, you know, people is, is somehow, somewhere, along the line, people feel that the discretion has not been exercised, exercised as appropriate, then there may be need to now put something that, that will make it mandatory. Well, I want to thank you very much, Senator Mamura, the former deputy minority <laughs> leader of the Senate, for uh, talking to us on Digi360. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for inviting me.